What's up, members of the Barrio? It's John, and I have received so many questions about coming to New York on a budget that I've decided to make this video. So here we go. How to visit New York City when you're broke. Well, you do need some money to come here. It's not exactly Dubai, so I'm hoping that this information helps you travel cheaply and more importantly, saves you money. A lot of the ideas that I'm referencing here have been covered in different vlogs before, so I'm gonna be putting a lot of links down below in the description to videos that are referenced here. And make sure that if you're new to check out my New York City playlist, we've covered almost every topic imaginable about your first trip to the Big Apple. Let's start with getting your butt here, and there are three major airports to choose from, JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark. Newark's located in northern New Jersey and is actually as close to Midtown Manhattan as JFK is. And your best bet to start is to go to Google Flights and go through your dates and pick all three of those airports, especially if you're flying domestically from the United States. A second option would be to sign up for a service like Scott's Cheap Flights, which I love by the way. And what they do is they send you emails with flight deals pretty much on a daily basis. And I'm sure that New York City would be on that list if it's somewhere that you're interested in traveling to because flight deals to New York tend to pop up more often than you would think. So those are your two best options to get cheap deals. You've arrived in the Big Apple. Can you find cheap lodging? And the answer definitely is yes. In fact, I did an entire video dedicated on finding a cheap hotel in New York City. Only $105 a night pre-tax and you are in a great neighborhood in the heart of downtown Manhattan in the financial district linked down below in the description. But let's go through some of the basics. Number one, time of year. If you come to New York City after the holidays and during the winter, you are going to get by far the best prices possible because, well, the least amount of tourists want to come to New York in January, February, and let's say March as well. So those three months are certainly going to be your cheapest bets. But what if you want to come here when it's warmer out? Can't say I blame you. If you're going to stay in downtown or midtown Manhattan, you're going to spend by far the most money. Unless you're a night owl and going out to bars and clubs is very high on your list, I think you would do just fine staying in either northern New Jersey, Queens, or even parts of Brooklyn. All of those spots have very good transportation to get to Manhattan at almost any hour of the day, the exception being late at night when subways aren't running as frequently or the buses to northern New Jersey aren't running at all. So if you're a night owl, you may want to plant yourself in Manhattan or better yet, stay in Williamsburg or Bushwick, Brooklyn, both of which have incredible nightlifes by themselves being outside of Manhattan. Another option is staying at a hostel. Yes, there are hostels in New York. Some of them are quite affordable. Another option is to go to Chinatown where some of the cheapest hotels in the entire city are located. The issue is some of them are quasi hostels, quasi hotels. You're gonna be in a converted room and the wall is gonna be paper thin. You're gonna hear your neighbor coughing or snoring throughout the night, but to stay in Manhattan could be worth it. Another tip I highly recommend is staying at an Airbnb that's already in somebody's apartment. So essentially you are renting out a spare bedroom while the owner of the apartment is there. And that is one of the only legal ways to rent an Airbnb in New York City right now. And you can get the best deals doing that. You're gonna have to share a bathroom, but if you're out and about exploring the city all day anyway, does it really matter? And as an extra bonus, if you want to get $20 off of your first Airbnb stay, check out my referral link down below. Finally, if you are completely broke and must come to New York City, your last ditch effort, attempt, whatever you want to call it, would be couchsurfing.com, although I wouldn't put super high odds of being successful on it if you're not really an active member, but certainly something to investigate if you're willing to stay with a host on their couch or on their floor. We've touched on getting here. We've touched on hotels. What about eating cheaply if you're broke? And the good news is there are plenty of cheap food options in New York. 
Let's start with free. I actually dedicated an entire video to finding the best happy hours in New York City that come with free food. Pasta? Pasta, told you. All you have to do is order a drink, any drink, and there could be a buffet waiting for you. I mean, these places could literally give you an entire meal for just ordering a beer or a Coke. Dollar in a dream? New York City is the king of dollar pizza places. There are over 70 in New York, and as somebody who's literally made a video trying to find the best dollar pizza slice in New York, I will tell you there are actually some quality places where you can get a good slice for just one dollar. And if you're broke, that's a damn good price. But I personally recommend upgrading to a slightly more expensive slice like the Nana Marie at Bleecker Street Pizza, my personal favorite. Or you could opt for even more food. Try the $5 pizza pie at Keste. And that place is quickly turning into one of my favorite lunch stops in all of New York. If you're broke and tired of pizza, we've uncovered some $5 hidden lunch places in Midtown that serve heaps of good Latin food. My favorite food neighborhood in New York, Jackson Heights, Queens, which I cannot wait to return to for everything from affordable Mexican to Thai and Nepalese. And I know what you're thinking, none of these spots are healthy. Well, I've got you covered. What about the recent Indian Delhi in the East Village? vegetarian food, super cheap, super good, highly recommended. And if you're completely uncreative and boring like I am sometimes, you're gonna get the lunch that I get at least once a week at Trader Joe's, their $4 salad to go, healthy and good. What about getting around New York City? I think many people are surprised to learn that they don't need to take the subway everywhere when in fact, you can walk all over Manhattan. I'm always surprised when I check my phone and I see that I average something like two to three miles walking per day and the cost of walking New York obviously is free. And then there are the subways, a very economical way to travel around New York, just $2.75 for a swipe. And there are no costs to transfer like in Tokyo, for example. So if you transfer stations, you won't pay anything extra. You can go from the top of the Bronx all the way to Queens for just one swipe. The New York City subway is one of the best deals on the planet. There are gonna be times where you don't feel like taking the subway, you don't feel like walking. That's where Uber and Lyft come in to save extra money. You could do Uber Pool or Lyft Share. And this brings me to my favorite new app that I just discovered called AnyRide. What is so great about this app is that it combines Uber and Lyft into one interface. So simple, you just input your pickup and drop off and it lets you see the prices between the two separate apps. This saves me a ton of time when I'm in a hurry and just don't feel like wasting extra time hopping between the two separate apps. So any ride needs to be on your phone before you come to New York. Trust me, download it now. So you're broke and you want to sightsee. The good news for you is that we have covered so many free things to do on this channel and I'm going to mention just some of my favorites off the top of my head. And the number one free activity I enjoy in New York more than anything else is taking the Staten Island Ferry. It gets you out onto the water and offers incredible views of the skyline and Statue of Liberty. And I'm still gonna stand by my statement that I don't think the majority of Statue of Liberty cruises are actually worth it. If you're broke and looking for a cheap date night or for my couples out there looking to save money and to do something very cheap, or in this case, free, do an art gallery hop. Every Thursday, you can find many art galleries that offer free openings to the public. You get in there, you try some free wine, and you'll be entertained looking at all the random exhibits, jumping between the different galleries. Heck, why don't I do this more often? It's such a fun night out with friends. Another can't miss for me is Roosevelt Island. For the cost of a $2.75 Metro card swipe, you ride the tram above the city and get dropped off on this little oasis. Nestled between Queens and Manhattan, wander about the bike paths and feel a sense of isolation that's almost impossible to find 
in Manhattan. It really should be on more tourist radars. Of course, there's many locations in New York that are iconic that you can just go and soak in completely for free. Bryant Park, Central Park, the High Line, even Times Square, as much of a tourist trap as it is, you could spend hours at any of these destinations and not spend a dime. Then there's free museum days. There are dozens of museums in New York that either don't charge admission or certain days of the week don't charge admission or just have a recommended donation. The Whitney, for example, pay what you wish every Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. Same thing with MoMA, Fridays from 4 to 8 p.m. And if you want an even more creative idea, why don't you visit the Bushwick Collective in Brooklyn, an amazing amount of street art, literally right there for the public to see. Just go wander around, take photos, enjoy the sights and sounds of Bushwick, a really cool neighborhood by itself. What about souvenirs when you're broke? Forget about those overpriced stores in Times Square. Adriana and I just discovered a place a couple of months ago called Five Below because everything in there is $5 or less and we literally cannot go inside without buying at least two or three cheap things and we live here. As far as souvenirs are concerned, there are so many New York City themed apparel and clothing and different crazy things. Trust me, check this store out. I promise you, you're going to like it. What about entertainment when you're broke. And what I'm about to suggest is actually kind of annoying being a resident of Greenwich Village only because when I'm walking around at night, I'm constantly approached for free stand-up comedy. But if I was visiting New York and I actually wanted a very cheap activity to do, free stand-up comedy in Greenwich Village or the East Village is an excellent idea. Generally speaking, the show is free and you have to buy a minimum of at least one drink and the acts are typically up and comers, but I've done it before. And one time my friend thought that he was so cool trying to heckle the comedians, but little did he know that they would gang up on him and make him the center of most of their jokes for that night. Ah, uh, the memories. You know what one of my favorite free things to do in New York is? Going to Washington Square Park, sitting on a bench and enjoying some free music from a street performer. A lot of times I'll see two-piece jazz bands or someone on a piano, a saxophone. It's very relaxing. You can tip if you want, but not necessary. Just enjoy the sights and sounds of the city or better yet, get lost. Wander New York without a plan. You are sure to run into interesting stores or random pop-up exhibits markets, street fairs. New York is one of the best cities on earth not to have a plan, just to wander about and see exactly what you're gonna find. So please don't plan every single day of your trip, especially if you're broke. Make sure to check out my other New York City playlists and all of the ideas that I talked about on this video are going to be referenced down below in the description. So I hope that you can find some really cool and cheap activities to do because of what you've learned from this channel and make sure to subscribe if you're new here and want to keep up with all of our adventures from not only New York City, but around the world. Guys, thank you so much for watching as always. Until next time.